my last day in my apartment and I'm taking a bath for the last time in my tub and I'm having a very emotional morning. I just went over to the lake and had a good cry by the lake and uh, then went to my local Starbucks. I've been doing this routine for the last week because I basically have been off just gradually moving and grudgingly gradually moving because I really, really, really don't want to leave my apartment. And broader than that, I don't want to leave my neighborhood. And it just today, I think really what is washing over me that like how much I love it here, how much I fucking love it here and why I love it here. And it's just, it is one of the coolest neighborhoods maybe in the world, but definitely in Chicago. And I was thinking about how like outside of the Bay Area where I lived in high school in San Jose, this is probably the most diverse place I've ever lived. There's people from everywhere. There's immigrants from everywhere. There's people of every color. There's people of all kinds of religions. There's uh, gay people, trans people, every kind of person. And the thing that's so awesome about it is uh, I keep thinking about, God, I wish I was emotional, but I keep thinking about during the pandemic, how when everything was shut down and you know, that happened in like the spring and then and then uh, in the summer months, they were doing all these weird things where they were trying to keep people off the beach, but it was like you could go on the beach at exactly 7 p.m. The lifeguards would leave. And I live right by the beach, but there's like a park next to the beach, this grassy park area. Everybody, when the weather was nice, would just congregate at the park. And it's just all different types of people just peacefully chilling at the park. And it's just this beautiful energy, this beautiful environment that's like nothing else. And like, especially when you turn on the news and everything is so like full of hate and, and there's so much turmoil everywhere. And then you have this little oasis of, of peaceful coexist coexistence. It's just so special that you're just blown away by it. And that's why I just don't want to leave. I don't want to move away. And uh, I am going away for a month or so and I, I have the possibility of coming back in a month and subletting. And I told the people, even though I wanted to not necessarily commit, I told the people that I might rent from, I will commit to six months minimum because I love it here too much. And it's a great, it looks like it's going to be a great place with great people, a super diverse set of roommates, which is awesome as far as I'm concerned. I love being in an environment with people who are not the same as me because you just have so much to learn from each other and awesome conversations. And uh, so fingers crossed that's going to work out. I wish this wasn't an emotional day for me. I guess I should just, you know, ride the wave because life is like that sometimes. But I just... I'm sitting here in my tub taking one more bath, even though it's like the eighth bath this week. I'm not exaggerating. I'm having my coffee. I lost it at the Starbucks. I think I just said that when my friend there asked how I was feeling today. And I was like, I'm sad. And I love the people that work there. They're all really cool. I feel like it's my people, my neighborhood, you know. So going to get through today grudgingly. <laughs> get my move done with my buddy who I love and I'm looking forward to seeing him. He'll definitely like cheer me up, I'm sure. You know, this is just a transition and transitions can be painful, but it doesn't mean it's a transition into something bad. It's just a change. But damn it, I'm gonna be back here in this neighborhood. That's my goal. <laughs> I mean, I was dead set on like, I'm not gonna have an apartment. I'm not gonna have rent. I'm not gonna have a car payment. And now I'm like, I can't leave Chicago because I love Chicago so much. It's just, there's something magical about it that gets under your skin that is inexplicable with the crazy weather and all the stuff that, you know, the undesirable things that maybe put Chicago on the map. But a lot of people who don't live here don't fucking understand what a great place this is. And it is one of the coolest fucking places on earth. The end. So anyway. Hello, just a little bit of an update. Uh, so I moved yesterday and it was really hard and it is hard really having a challenging time figuring out or like how do I want to say this it's like having a hard time knowing what your gut is actually saying to you and like learning how to listen to what what you're hearing from yourself or feeling sometimes more difficult than it seems because you're like well of course this is going to be hard and uncomfortable I'm doing something new I'm doing something that is outside of my comfort zone so 
then you're there's part of you that's like no 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 stay with what you know you know like don't don't rock the boat just do what's easy like I have these moments where I'm like I should just have kept bartending and you know living in the same situation and kept everything easy and predictable which is not a path toward growth and it would have kept me in a financial treadmill I also sort of didn't think through the timing of things in a way that would help me ease into a transition. I just was like, let me rip off the band-aid, it'll be fine. I was just having a, a long, rather healing, helpful conversation with my best friend and it's always good to have those conversations with people that really know you and understand you. I was saying how I have this tendency to tell myself something's gonna be great when I want it to turn out great and then the reality doesn't match that sometimes. And this moving situation is sort of a case in point like, I know for sure that I'm not going to stay where I am no matter what. I just have to figure out where I'm going to go <laughs> in a month because this is not a situation that is going to work for me. And then I'm starting a new job at the same time and this is a long pattern for me of moving in an often dramatic kind of way like leaving a place that I really wanted to stay in, not wanting to leave the place and then at the same time getting another job. It's really weird. Another thing that's really weird is um, moving into a place that is really close to certain landmarks that have meaning for you from things that happened in the past. And thinking back on like going to a place and you know, like there's a hair salon that's two doors down from where I'm living now that I used to get my hair cut. I only went there a couple of times because it's crazy expensive, like a lot of things in this part of the city. They did such a fucking good job though. <laughs> this chick fucking, she cut the shit out of my hair, man. I'll tell you what. But it's really weird to be like living right by it and realize like I was sitting in a chair getting my hair cut there back in 2012 or 2013 and not realizing I was two doors down from somewhere that I was going to live someday when I was going through like another really difficult transition. And back then it was a difficult transition too. Tomorrow's my first day at the new job and uh, I'm expecting some fallout from the old job and but I'm not I'm not too concerned about it. I just have to like move through it and know that it's probably not going to do anything and you just have to do your best to remain focused and positive. So that's what I'm doing because that's all I can do, you know? Hello, my people. Um, <laughs> I found out that I got the apartment that I was really hoping to get into. And it's funny how everything changed because, you know, originally I was like, I'm going to move into the truck. I'm not going to be paying rent or a car payment anymore. And that was a lovely idea, but it wasn't a realistic idea based on where I was working before and the type of equipment that I was driving and just not feeling secure and not trusting the situation and not feeling like my best interests were in anyone's in the forefront of anyone's minds you know and that's that's where I was like okay I don't want to put myself in a sketchy situation you know so so I'm in training I'm in the hotel I'm so glad I made this move already I know it was absolutely the right move training starts pretty early in the morning it's like 6 30 we have to be there so I've been getting up at like four. This will be the first chance I have to like get a little bit more sleep. So I'm really happy about that. Not because like my other training, I ended up being forced into sleep deprivation night after night after night. <laughs> this is not that situation at all. Actually what happened that was kind of weird is I'm in the hotel, which I should have been in all along, but my recruiter for some reason told me that I lived too close to be in the hotel which apparently none of the other people that are here were told that. I was able to get moved into the hotel, which saves me fuel and time and is really important, especially when gas prices are really high. I'm going through a, a really challenging transition time when money is a little bit low. So the last thing I wanna do is waste money on gas and you know, waste time driving. So far, this has been great as far as like the way that I'm being trained and the things I'm learning. It's far superior to the experience I had before where I was not really being trained properly at all. There was so much of a gap. When I say gap, I mean a gap between what I learned in CDL school and what I needed to know to be a safe driver on the road. And if you are a new driver or if you're like in CDL school or you're thinking about CDL school, you have to really look at yourself honestly and ask yourself what kind of driver you want to be 
and what are your goals and if your goals are strictly to make money and you don't care as much about like really understanding the mechanics of driving and of operating a truck and the different types of trucking and the different things that you have to do the different responsibilities that you have and understanding how those different actions work if you go into the wrong type of setting from CDL school you are not only not going to be set up for success but you are potentially being set up to be a dangerous driver and a danger to yourself and to everyone on the road. And I can't really emphasize that enough. Uh, the safety aspect of driving is paramount. There's nothing more important than that because it doesn't matter how much money you make if you end up in prison or if you end up dead or if someone else ends up dead and you have to live with that on your conscience for the rest of your life. No money is worth that. When I went to the other company, there was so much missing. And one of the things the in, one of the instructors said the other day to me really resonated. He said something about how when you get out of CDL school, you're, you learn just enough to be dangerous. And I think that is a perfect way to phrase that. I don't think that's a mischaracterization at all because you know how to start a truck and how to make a truck move, but you don't really know how to drive a truck. I wish CDL school did teach you a lot more and I wish it was longer and more extensive than it is, but it just doesn't work that way. It's like the whole industry. There's so much just rushing people to get out there because there's this desperation for drivers. And at the core of that is the problems with the industry make retention a constant issue. And it's like, well, maybe if we had more regulation on the trucking industry and made it more driver friendly, we wouldn't have so many problems with retention. But anyway, that's a whole other can of worms. But I guess I would say like for anybody who's new, if you want to feel confident in your in your abilities to just be at the basic level, a safe driver who has confidence operating the truck and doing the basic functions, then it's probably a better idea to go to a larger company with a good reputation. And even if you may not make as much money off the bat, bottom line, what I'll end up talking about later is I, I did a job for a 1099 company, which is generally not a very good idea. For some people, it can probably work out. And my guess is it's better if you already have experience and you want to go that route and you understand how to manage it financially because it's complicated. It's not something that someone like me who's already not great with money, you need to be smart and savvy enough to understand the liabilities that are involved with for you as an individual if you decide to go with a 1099 job. And a lot of people sell people on 1099s, especially new drivers, and make it think make them think they're going to make all this money. This is the conclusion I reached that I think is the most important overarching point. If you are fresh out of CDL school and you get offered a job making really good money that's like significantly above average for what a new trucker should make, you are sacrificing something else. There's there's a reason. And most of the time you think you're making a lot more money, but that's because you probably haven't done the math. And I think there's a lot of people who bury their heads in the sand and are like, oh yeah, I'll worry about the taxes. No, dude, you, <laughs> you worry about the taxes beforehand. You, you need to know like you're gonna lose your ass if you don't really understand what you're doing there. The bigger thing too is like, you're dealing a lot of times with people who don't give a fuck about you and with no legal protections that most employees would get, no typical protections that are offered by a structure of a W-2 job. Going with a larger company that has a great safety reputation and a more thorough and rigorous training process is a much smarter and safer way to go if you want to be good at your job and the money can come later, but you're not gonna make money or you're not gonna be out there doing it for very long if you're making serious mistakes because you haven't been trained correctly. I just am really glad I made this decision. It was totally the right decision. I realized it on day one of training. I don't know if I'll ever say where I work because I just, I like the freedom to express myself as however I want to in my videos. And I feel like once I say who I work for, then it's like, you have to, be like representing their company and I, I don't want to do that. I always want to be like free to be as weird and independent and off the grid and rogue and maybe political or whatever as I want to be. I don't want to have to tiptoe around the things I like to talk about because I'm representing a brand or a 
you know, big company or whatever. This training experience is bridging the gap between CDL school and being out on the road as a truck driver. And let's face it, no matter what job you take on, no matter how good the training is, a lot of it is just experience. That's where you're really going to learn is out, out there. But you don't want to do like I did and spend two weeks out on the road on your own and have crazy shit happen that makes you realize that you are not as prepared as you should be for the situations that you're in. You wanna be with a company that puts safety first. So that's kind of a long way of saying that over and over again. But yeah, things are going great. I'm happy to be getting good training. I'm happy to be in my own private, quiet hotel room with my own bathroom. <laughs> that is key. All right. I'm going to get some Z's and go to training tomorrow and learn some more stuff. And yeah, super truck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. another update from the hotel room. I wish this video could be more visually interesting and I would love to be able to show you more from training. Really what you would see anyway is a very muddy yard with lots of gravel and mud and big puddles and it's raining and we're getting in and out of the truck over and over again because basically what we've been doing is spending a good amount of time working on different skills and we're working on backing right now. It's really interesting to just have the experience of having gone to work for someone where I wasn't really trained, I was just driving and that was my training. And there was some securement training, but it wasn't, I'm certain that if I were to do the securement training through my current company, it would be a radically different experience with a lot more specific detail and testing and stuff like that, which was not what happened in my other uh, job. I'm not trying to like harp on it or anything like that, but it's just, it is a crazy difference in one thing being training and the other thing just being working. You're going out there and you are with your boss, but there's no real attention being paid to let's keep developing your skills, let me test your skills. I think anyone who has any real awareness of the trucking industry should automatically be aware that you're not being taught a lot of things in CDL school. And like I said in a previous video, you're taught just enough to be dangerous really, which is fucking true. I think it makes the most sense when you go to a new company and you're a brand new employee that they say, show me how you do a pre-trip. If you have not used that or you haven't driven that particular truck before you've never pre-tripped that particular truck before you're inexperienced you're a newer driver they should assume that you're not going to know everything because things are different on different trucks and even though there's there are some things that should be generally the same there's i think there probably always are going to be some differences i think any employer who really wants you to be good at your job should be willing to say I want you to show me the pre-trip and if you don't feel like you have enough familiarity with this truck, then I will show you the pre-trip and I want you to take notes and then I want you to work on studying it and when you know it, you're going to be tested on it. 
because how are they going to send you out into the world when you can't even pre-trip that truck and that's kind of how i felt in the last one and i almost felt like insecure admitting it you know but then looking back i realized that i was kind of doing my usual thing and blaming myself for something that wasn't really my fault instead of you know expecting a higher standard for my training that's just also partly a personality I don't want to say defect but it feels like a defect on my part that I you know I'm more likely to just blame myself I think this is partly a thing we learn to do as women to be honest with you we learn to just sort of be quiet about things sometimes that we may observe and think hmm that's kind of fucked up but because we're in realms where speaking up would be seen as difficult which is most realms we just say, okay, well, I'm just gonna do my best and figure it out for myself, which is not a good solution when you're dealing with something that has a high potential for danger like trucking. So we've been tested on everything. And uh, for example, we did not do coupling and un uncoupling in CDL school, which is kind of crazy because in many, many, many jobs that you do when you're a trucker, you have to be able to couple and uncouple a tractor trailer and if you don't know how to do that correctly it could be deadly because you could drop a trailer while you're driving and it could kill people it's like these things are to me are like step one you know and it's super weird that they even put people out and give people cdls without having even done that i never coupled or uncoupled a tractor trailer in school they explained it to us and we needed to be able to like sort of explain it but if you haven't physically done something you're not going to know how to do it that's so stupid so we had to do that we had to demonstrate break, the brake test the full brake test which is something you do have to do on the cdl and you should know how to do you know and then we had to do the pre-trip we had to demonstrate that and it was good to do all that stuff because i graduated from cdl school in december it's been months and i have been working for someone who doesn't have the, that type of standard so i i had to uh you know just what i said in a, in a previous video um where i was talking about switching jobs I needed to uh, take a step back and like revisit things I needed to know. And this, this job is a great bridge between CDL school and being out on the road as a new driver. Do I want to practice backing all day in the rain and mud? Fuck no, I don't. But I'm going to have to back this shit a million times a day. Be well, not probably three times a day, but I'm going to have to be proficient at backing and I'm not going to be good at it for a while. And what's interesting today, so let me give a little, a little criticism here. Different trainers have different training styles. And as anyone knows, probably any of you watching who has been a trucker for any length of time, if you have been trained by a super trucker before, and plenty of these trainers out here are super truckers or retired super truckers, then you know that there's some frustration there because they're going to start throwing terms at you that you, you know, you don't know what they're saying. And then you feel awkward saying, what do you mean? You know, and, and it's like, they talk to you with this weird kind of attitude, like you should already know. And it's like, how the fuck would I know? I'm totally new at this shit. I was dealing with something that is always frustrating to me where I was dealing with a trainer who really wanted me to smile a lot and didn't like it if I didn't smile a lot, which is a very frustrating, irritating and frankly shitty thing that men do to women because that person is never going to be nagging a man to smile and it was so irritating because it's like I'm dealing with a lot of neck pain today my neck was doing so much better and unfortunately all the backing practice all day long having to crane my neck turn I have to basically turn my whole body and it's hard to it totally has to do with my stature like being a smaller person I have to turn my whole body and like lean it out the window to, in order to watch my trailer. And that, man, dude, pain, a lot of pain today. So I got that, I've got multiple people telling me what I should be doing, which is fucking irritating. Then this guy is telling me to smile and I wanna be like, you take that smile shit and shove it right up your fucking ass, like for real. <laughs> and it's a generational thing, you know? And it's like having been a bartender for so long, there's certain types of dudes that I'm so familiar with. I don't even get that mad at them. I'm just like, these guys are old school. Like this is just how they are. They don't get it. And if you tried to explain it to them, they still wouldn't get it and they would probably just get mad at you so it's easier on you if you just like swallow it but it's real fucking annoying it's like bro I'm not here for you I'm not here to smile at you I'm not here to laugh at your jokes I am here to learn and I need to keep whatever demeanor works for me while I'm in that process but whatever that's a fucking tirade I don't need to go on because I could keep going I don't need to the pain sometimes has really been getting to me I know it's probably a little bit worse when it's 
this kind of weather real rainy and humid and gross. Actually, today and yesterday, there's a treadmill down the hall for me at this hotel, and I haven't run in years. And running is technically not the smartest thing for me to do because of the certain issues that I have with my body. But I was like, you know what? I am eating shitty food because they're feeding us this fast food restaurant shit every day. And I felt so good. I'm like amazed at just from having been doing yoga and breathing exercises every day. I'm really impressed with how well I'm able to hang doing cardiovascular exercise that I haven't done in a long time. It's like my heart is clearly in very good shape and that's fucking awesome. I was doing like some intervals for like 20 minutes, which is plenty for me right now. And doing like three, three and a half minutes at a pace that I used to run, which is weird. And then wa doing, you know, walking for a minute and a half in between or whatever felt so good. It felt great to sweat. I felt great afterward, get some of those good natural painkillers flowing through my body. And it's like, man, I love the discomfort of running. And it sounds weird to say that, but I really do. I love doing something like that, that I haven't done in a long time. I love it when I'm doing that interval and there's part of me going like, oh, I want to get through this. I only have one minute left. I have a minute and a half, whatever. It feels good to be like, this is hard right now. And I love it. So that was cool. But um, the pain has been with my neck has been really getting to me today. I did speak to the physical therapist for a couple of minutes. And honestly, like the guy that was bugging me with the smile shit, I like that guy too, too. Like I, I can be annoyed by someone and like them at the same time. You know, I'm I am open minded that way because <laughs> I, I try to understand where people are coming from and they're not coming. They're not trying to be mean. You know, they don't they don't understand the way that it makes you feel. And so uh, whatever. Um, but he was like real insistent on me talking to the PT. The PT had been in the middle of a session and came out to talk to me really quick during a lunch break. I can see him for free twice a week, which is amazing. And it might be difficult to coordinate with my work schedule, but if I can even get in once a week, it'll make a huge difference. So that was encouraging, but I just want to say like, I was getting real down with the pain today and I was starting to feel like you get this hopelessness that hits you where you feel like, you start saying stuff to yourself that is maybe woe is me sort of feeling sorry for yourself, but like, this is my life. Pain is my life. This is my destiny. This is never going to go away. And it's very discouraging. And it, I started thinking about how, like, am I not going to be able to do trucking because of pain? I quit personal training and I have talked about reasons why I quit training, but pain was a huge factor in it too, because I was like, I'm in pain and it's my fault and I can't fix it. And I've always been real hard on myself about it and blame myself. There's always a part of me that's going to blame myself for the pain that I'm in because I feel like all these things I did, all these athletic pursuits, all this obsessive exercising and all these things I did, it's my fault. I deserve it. Or, you know, it's just weird. Pain does some really weird shit to you psychologically. And the worse it is, the worse your headspace can get. And I'm an expert at talking myself down and redirecting myself. But pain is fucking, it tweaks your thinking, man. It's really hard. I have a lot of empathy for anyone else out there who understands what I'm talking about. And there's a lot of people who have far more severe pain problems than I do. Dude, pain is a mind fuck. And if you're also a person who's living with chronic pain, I feel for you because it's people who don't experience it don't get it. It is a constant it's like having a toddler screaming in your ear all day long that won't stop <laughs> that's one way to put it i guess anyway this video is getting too long but just another day in training i'm fatigued i feel pretty lonely i love being alone in a hotel room it's nice but also there's a real loneliness because i'm in a different place i'm in a different state where the views are very fucking different you know you go to different places and you experience some weird cultural differences sometimes that's why my heart always <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to go back to Chicago. Oh, yeah. So anyway, going back to Chicago on Saturday to see my new apartment. I can't wait. And this video is too long. And that's all I'm going to say. Thanks. Bye. Good night. I'm going to go watch Ozark now. I'm almost done. No spoilers.
living I'm living in my hotel room but I'm living out of bags and I have been for a while this is what my hotel room is looking like and this is like oh my food's done I <laughs> nuked some old ass leftovers this is a number of bags and then there are more bags inside those bags um, which I will use to transport my stuff and here's some more clothes that I brought with me this time so that I would have them. There's my tripod so I can try to get some actual decent video maybe. Some groceries I brought with me so I can not eat so much junk food because what we've been eating in training is total junk. Uh, some actual fresh fruit, boom. And there's a fridge and freezer here and I brought some healthy groceries. So I have my kefir and I have my apple cider vinegar and my fresh OJ and my yogurt and my oat milk and stuff. Oh, wait a minute though. <laughs> <laughs> you know I ran myself a bath. There's my laptop ready to watch some Bill Maher. Got some skincare waiting to happen. I am in the midst of moving. I just went to my new apartment earlier and saw what my space is gonna be like and then went to my current apartment, moved a bunch of stuff from there into storage. And it's just such a weird experience right now to be transitioning from into a new job, into and out of an apartment, into a hotel, then in a week I'm gonna be moving out of this hotel. But I moved like half my shit in this t into this hotel because I'm like, I'll be damned if I'm not gonna be comfortable while I'm staying in this hotel. So it's really weird, I'm just doing my best how does that look? Let's see. I am doing my best, doing my damnedest to, here, let's get so you can see the full, <laughs> you know what you're going to see here. I'm doing my damnedest to make myself feel comfortable and at home while I'm in a really just so weird transitional time. I feel like I come across as though like my stupid problems are significant when they are not. I'm just sharing one person's experience, but man, am I aware of my privilege and my fortune in this life. My life is great. I am supported and loved. I have plenty of food to eat. I'm going into deeper and deeper debt every day, <laughs> but I'm American. So, you know, it's just kind of like the American way but it's all good. I'm just grateful. I am really grateful, but I just felt the need to acknowledge that I'm not completely like out of my mind, obsessed with my little world at all. It's just a weird world right now. You know, it's a weird time. Being in transition is weird. I don't love it, but this is where we are. Are you guys bored yet with the hotel room video format? Cause I kind of am. <laughs> um, I'm about to eat some food. I just nuked. It's one of those, um, I hate you know, eating too many frozen meals, but I am grateful to have a hotel room that has a mini fridge and freezer and a microwave. But just some reflections on today, day five, Friday of my first week of training at my new job, working for a major carrier. Today, I was just like over it. I was tired. They're like 10 hour days. It's a weird feeling because I'm dealing with like this loneliness, this lonely feeling and kind of feeling isolated, which is really weird because I'm not even in the truck yet when I really will be alone. I think it's because I'm in an environment with people that I don't really know. Not that I dislike anyone. No one's cold or mean. I also don't feel like I really know anybody, you know? So it's kind of a weird situation that. And then the other thing is I had a day today where I was just like, dealing with certain male energy makes me want to like throw things you know in certain situations like you just have to sort of be polite and you're just going with decorum and it's a professional environment so you're not going to like try to make some kind of a stance but inside you're kind of seething because you're just trying to like be yourself and you expect that people will treat you equally but also just this thing where I reach a threshold of irritation with male ego behavior and I don't need your fucking male ego super trucker energy like when I'm trying to learn a new set of skills and it's long days and it's cold as fuck and damp and it's just like crappy one of the things that's really been kind of grating on my nerves to be honest with you I, and this is kind of like I'm going on a rant tangent <laughs> a rant a rangent <laughs> I really think that there's some good instruction going on. But there's also some disorganized stuff going on, which happens in, in many organizations. I'm not bitter about that. But one thing I think is really irritating and unprofessional is when you have a group of instructors that are talking about the students to each other in front of the students and clearly like laughing and making jokes about them. One of the other trainees mentioned to me that she's really good at reading lips and she could tell they were talking about us because she could tell what they were saying. And it shouldn't ever be a situation where that can happen. That's not professional. And I just, I don't 
enjoy that kind of thing because we're being expected. There's a lot being asked of us. We're being expected to learn and memorize a lot of information, which we should, of course, no complaints there. That's what we need to be doing. We don't need the added mental clutter of like you guys clearly being sort of like clicky around us. Like you were once in our shoes too. So have some compassion, stop being dicks. And you know, if you guys want to talk shit about us, which I'm sure you have a lot of interesting insights and like jokes but like keep it in your own private areas that you guys go in that we don't go in because there are spaces like that there's like office areas that they go in that we really don't keep it to those spaces don't be assholes you know it's just fucking rude so that annoys me i was just feeling fucking over it today and i think so much of it is just day after day of gloomy rainy weather so i'm on a rant sorry guys a rangent as i said i'm gonna have to re-nuke this food because it's gonna get cold while i rant <laughs> but also just like financially things are not good at all right now they're gonna stay not good for a while and i'm trying to not think about it too much because it's just like this is the way it is when you're new in this type of industry it's you're never gonna make great money in the beginning and if you are then something's wrong you're probably not setting aside taxes and working on 1099 or something <laughs> oh Okay, so I want to tell you, tell you something funny. So maybe some of the people that follow me also follow Nisha K, the, the YouTube trucker. I've been following her for a while now, maybe since sometime last year. I really like her videos. She's a sweet person and she's, you know, she shows an interesting perspective on trucking and stuff. I was really tired after a long ass day today and I got home to the hotel home and I was running a bath and I got in the tub and then I start responding to a couple of comments on my YouTube videos. I look forward to that at the end of the day when I go on YouTube and I see that there's a couple of comments. And I'm like, oh, what do they say? And I, I always like to respond. I try to respond to pretty much every comment. Someone responded to a comment I wrote on Anisha K video. And there was like a bunch of likes and a bunch of comments on what I had written. And I responded to their comment. And then I was, you know how when you do that, then you end up in the other person's comments. So I started responding to other comments as if they were to me because <laughs> they were about trucking you know but they were to Nisha and I went I was like uh wait oh man and I started going back and deleting them because I was like thanks for commenting I'm like man I'm getting so many likes on these because Nisha has a huge following so she has like you know 60 likes on one comment and 40 something comments on another likes on another comment and I'm like Oh, this this video really resonated with people and then i'm like you fucking dummy these are nisha's comments and likes so i'm pretty sure that my replies will be in nisha's comments and she'll be like why is this chick <laughs> anyway that was funny i just thought i would share oh i remember the other thing i wanted to say dude today i finally drove the truck for the first time and i couldn't believe it but i was totally not enjoying driving an automatic it felt really weird it felt out of control like i didn't like the truck doing the shifting for me it was weird i know i'm gonna have to get used to it it was rainy today and like at one point i wasn't going very fast and i went over a bridge and started to like lose traction and it was really nerve-wracking because i was like whoa i wasn't expecting that and then i realized i was like i think it would have not been like that if i was driving a manual Maybe someone can comment on that in the comments, but I never thought I would miss the manual, but I really feel unnerved by not being in control of the truck. It's, it's really fucking weird. It's like too immense of a vehicle to not have it be manual. That's the way I feel right now. I'm sure once I get used to it, it'll be fine, especially when I'm dealing with that stop and go shit. But yeah, it's, it's fucking weird, man. I, I, didn't like it that much. Anyway, those are my reflections from this week. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for bearing with the boringness of this video. And hopefully I'll have some more interesting comment coming. Comment? <laughs> content. Some more interesting visual content in my videos when I'm allowed to show what I'm able to show once I'm on the job, y'all. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.